Hi, the French have been revolting. It's Bastille Day. I've got nothing against the French, I love them. Uh, Bastille Day, everything's closed, so I thought we'd do a little video. I thought we'd do a video of uh, a little still life. Now, I'm going to try and get a nice picture of this, showing all the facets, facets in the glass. It's cut glass, quite a nice decanter. Um, so we'll try and get a nice shot of that. We'll try and get a nice shot of that. Always look at the camera when you're talking. Um, so let's get on. Now I always try and get an idea uh, in my mind what I want to do. So, um, for example, the carafe I'm going to shoot, I would like it to um, be a lot smaller there. So what I want to do is try and create a pyramid effect with it, with all the nice cut glass uh, being being uh, nicely lit. Now I create around it a sort of halo. And that halo, I'll wait and see really how I'm going to do that and what colour I want. But it will probably be uh, lighter or darker, um, a little bit uh, over the height. So we'll, well, we'll get on with it, but that's really what I want. This nice sort of pyramid look, probably even more than I've just drawn. Now of course this means, to get that nice effect, that we're going to have to use a very wide angle lens. So I put a 10mm on. And the camera is very, very low, looking up at the product. So I put the product on a piece of glass. Um, I might keep it like that, might not. We'll see. This is all a question of experimentation at this time. Now, why is it so low? Well, the, the wide-angle lens is such that it's, in fact, if, if I'm not careful, going to be looking at the ceiling. So I put it very, very close to the background. That's not too bad. I've still got room to light the background. And you've got to think about all these things when you put it in place. So I've got enough background above. I've now got to find exactly the centre. If not, I won't get that nice pyramid. So that's going to be my biggest problem. So I'll get on with that. Well, here it is. Now I'm um, trying to get this centred. Now, as you can imagine, anyone who's been trying to do a cathedral or a church and get dead centre, this is extremely difficult. The slightest movement of the camera will get it right out. So I'm going to spend quite a lot of time doing this, so um, bear with me. And if anyone kicks the tripod when I've finished, I'll go mad. Now, an interesting tip on how to do this is to actually attach it with an HM, HDMI cord and then you can look at it on a monitor. Now I've got the monitor flat on the floor. Now what I've done is I've straightened that line of the top of the background. That's absolutely straight and I've straightened the glass to be parallel with that. So then I know as long as that is in the centre of the image and the distance between that side of the carafe and that side of the graph is exactly the same from the edge of the glass, I know that I must be dead centre. So, we're not far off, I've just got a little change to do, and then we'll get on with the lighting. Now, I'd start lighting it by having a look at the big softbox to see what that does. And I'd move it around. Now, again, I'm using the television screen. So, I would move it around, and I'd move it up and down. And this would give me a little idea of how the light is reflecting in these little facets. Well, having uh, looked at it now with the light from the side, I thought what we'd better do is have a look at with the light from the back. Now that became very interesting. Um, it came, and I, I'll show you what it did. Um, I'll take a shot like it, and I'll show you what it did in the camera. Well, this is it. Now, it's obvious that this is the way to go. Now, have I wasted the last hour of my life trying the light on the side? No, I haven't. It's all gone into my brain. It's a bit of experience. Um, but I'm definitely going to continue on this, on this line here, and we're going to get that much better. So now I'm doing a series of tests. Now, I'm moving this light. It's just a snoot, a uh, flashlight on a snoot. And I'm moving in different positions and taking a picture each time. And I'm finding that I can actually get a very nice result. The image as it is now, the latest. Um, now there's quite a lot to do still. <clears throat> a lot of you will say, oh well, stop it. You're on, you can do that on the computer. 
Um, but I just want to go that further, that bit further with it. Now we've got this white, this black line here, and that's due because of the the snoot. And I always find snoots do that, and I find it very annoying. So um, I've got to lose that somehow. I've got to decide what I'm going to do down at the bottom. Now I'll probably um, cut the image along the glass reverse the image or tip it upside down and stick the two together um, just losing the line but we'll see we'll have a go at that in a minute um, I'm beginning to wonder why I spent so long worrying about the ceiling being in the image it would have been a lot easier if I'd have been working further away from the background but all that said we're on the right track and I think we're very nearly there this is the image we're going to use um, to retouch. So let's have a little look uh, to see how we're going to approach that. Well, of course, another thing I can do is by going into um, Edit Transform, I can go into the perspective. Now, with the perspective, I can actually add, of course, uh, what we were talking about doing in the beginning, which was having it really uh, very deformed like that. Now, I'm not sure. I I'm, I think I'm going to keep it as it is, as it was because I actually quite like the shape of it. But uh, there's nothing to stop you doing what you want. Now I'll show you quickly what I'm going to do with the bottom. Um, I've put in another layer, and that layer is the same image reversed, or rather upside down. And I've just slid it underneath. Now to keep it this lesson short, I won't go into the details how to do that because. A lot of you already know. Um, it will be subject of other videos. Now to show you how carefully you have to, have to be with this, I've um, got my computer screen on and that blue reflection is my computer screen. So uh, you have to really look closely and retouch all the little details like that. This is the final image. Um, excuse the banding around the, the halo because it's not actually there. That's just the video reacting very strangely. What I've done with the reflector and the reflection underneath is I've darkened it and made it a little bit soft with a Gaussian blur. And I think it now makes quite a nice image. Well, um, I'll show you the setup now. Well, here's the setup. Uh, very, very simple. A uh, 10 millimeter lens on a Canon 7D at f16, one flash over the top, just causing a spot. Um, it really is as simple as that. Now, if you remember, I had trouble with a band on the snoot. Um, I got rid of it just by putting the honeycomb uh, in the center, and that got rid of it. Now, honeycombs work not from every distance, but uh, they can be helpful from time to time. I've got a light coming out of my head <laughs> somewhere. Um, right now, that's it. That's how to photograph that. Now, why don't you try it? If you've got any glass lying around your house, upload it onto itchyphoto.com. There's a few professionals there now giving advice. So, in fact, whatever type of photography, there's professionals giving their advice. So, we're all there to help you. Upload it, itchyphoto.com, and we'll see you soon.